how do I get under 8% body fat and stay there year round? How have I done this for the last six or seven years? Well, I put together a list. I'm not going to try to say that it doesn't take hard work. Okay, it does. And the reality is, is that this is now my career and part of my literal career is staying in shape. So sure, I have a reason, I have a focus, and I have motivation to stay as lean as I stay. But that doesn't mean that people don't want to hear what I do to do this. Because maybe you're at a time in your life where you can put all your stock into getting lean and staying lean. Or maybe you just want to take bits and pieces from what I share. So let's go ahead and jump in. After today's video, I popped a link down below for House of Macadamia, which you will find in this video, I do eat quite a bit of macadamia nuts. That's part of my regimen. So I popped the link down below for 20% off through House of Macadamia if you want to get their awesome macadamia nuts, their sugar-free chocolate or white chocolate covered macadamia nuts. They have an awesome macadamia nut oil that is super top-notch and they have sugar-free, low-carb macadamia nut bars where the first ingredient is macadamia nuts. And they're all grown in South Africa by local farmers there, and then everything is harvested and then packaged and taken care of less than an hour's drive from the farms themselves. So that link down below, 20% off, check them out. The first thing that I do that is a lifestyle thing that is the most important, probably in my eyes, is I walk a minimum of 10,000 steps per day. And if I cannot hit that 10,000 step goal for whatever reason, I compensate for it another day. So by the end of the week, I have a minimum of 70,000 steps. This to me is the foundation. And from what I know with metabolic research and what I know with insulin dynamics and glucose glycemic control, it all comes down to keeping moving. So yes, this is important. It allows my body to maintain an ability to utilize fats. It keeps my glucose regulated. It keeps my insulin low. I think it's a huge piece, if not probably the biggest piece, because I can simply upregulate this and increase it or decrease it if I need to. The next simple thing is I don't typically eat after 7 p.m. That will be the occasion in which I do, but typically I shut it down by 7 p.m. This keeps my glucose under control. It prevents me from binging and eating bad things that I would normally eat at night because yes, I'm human and I get huge cravings at night and if I just shut it down at seven, it's just pretty easy. Now, occasionally I'll have some lean protein or maybe some Greek yogurt right before bed if I'm having trouble sleeping. I've talked about that in other videos, but most of the time I'm shutting it down at 7 p.m. One of the most important things that I do and something that I know Dr. Tommy Wood, who I've had on this channel, does as well, is I closely watch the mirror. And I watch the mirror and I increase calories until I notice a slight bit of body fat that maybe I feel I need to get rid of. I always try to beef it up a little bit and then bring it down. Very micro scale bulk and cut. Now we're not talking like visibly where anyone else would really notice it other than myself. Once you're already lean, you can do this. This is how I maintain it. I can look in the mirror and I can tell, okay, I've probably put on about a pound of fat. Now it's time to restrict calories and bring it down. Because I never want to try to stay super, 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 super lean because I'm just going to crash my metabolism. So I increase calories and still I'm starting to gain because that means I'm in a surplus and it's time to reel it back. How do I reel it back? The quickest way for me to reel it back is pull a lever with my fat intake. Fats are not bad. I love fats. I eat a high fat diet, generally speaking. But when it's time for me to reel the weight in a little bit, if I bump up to seven or 8% and I wanna get back down to six or I bump up to 9% and I want back down to eight, the first thing I do is I reduce my fat intake. It's the easiest calorie lever to pull. And we have to remember that fats are still calorically dense. So I reduce the fats and I suck the fat away pretty darn quick. Next, with my workout style, I almost invariably do some kind of full body workout. I used to do more bodybuilding style stuff. But now I always try to train upper and lower body together, whether it's going to be hamstrings and back or whether it's going to be more quad focused and biceps and shoulders. The bottom line is that I'm using my full body. And this is again for glycemic control and for maximum glucose uptake and for maximum fat utilization throughout the rest of the day. This has just become a staple in me staying lean year round. As far as my diet is concerned, protein is king. I prioritize protein above all else. And when in doubt, protein it out. When in doubt, when you're in an airport and you need something to eat, 
Don't opt for the carb, opt for a lean protein or a fatty protein. Just lean into the protein because that's just where it's at. My general rule of thumb for me is one gram of protein per pound of body weight, usually a little bit more, quite honestly. And that's that simple. I rotate my fasting schedule. Three times per week, as of right now, release of this video, I will do what is called ETRF, early time restricted feeding, where I'll stop eating around 4 p.m. or so and kind of have an early dinner. And maybe I'll just hang out with the family and drink some decaf tea or something while they're eating dinner two or three nights a week, usually three. And then the next week, I will do the opposite with my fasting schedule. I'll skip breakfast. So I'm never adapting to one particular thing. Three days of ETRF one week, three days of skipping breakfast the next week, three days of ETRF. And then again, I have flexibility to increase this or decrease this based upon my specific goals. But this is generally what I have done over the last three years with ETRF and six, seven, eight years with regular fasting. And I highly recommend you try it because it's an easy way to control the calories and it's an easy way to control glycemic response as well. I do 60 to 90 days of Mediterranean-ish kind of keto and then I'll do 60 to 90 days of Mediterranean-ish style not keto. And what I mean by Mediterranean-ish is I don't eat a literal exact Mediterranean diet, but I adopt Mediterranean principles. Lots of olive oil, lots of good healthy fats, lots of lean meats, lots of fiber, lots of vegetables, lots of fish, lots of shellfish, lots of mussels, lots of clams, things like that. That's just my diet. The only difference is one has a bunch of legumes and a bunch of lentils and things like that when I'm not on keto, and the other has less of that and more of the olive oil and more of the avocados and more of the fats. It's that simple. But I like to cycle on and off for lots of reasons that don't need to be in this particular video. And just so you know, you don't have to do every single one of these things. Maybe you pick up one thing. Maybe you pick up two things. Maybe it helps you. That's the idea. These aren't cardinal rules that you have to absolutely do. The things that, hey, if you pick up four of these things and they change your life, that's a win. I eat a lot of berries. I eat a lot of berries when I'm on keto. I eat even more berries when I'm not on keto. I generally time them around my workout and I eat them because they keep me full, they make my brain happy, and they keep me from binging on something else that might be worse. I eat a lot more fiber than the next guy. And that's just how I roll. And some people rain on my fiber parade, say fiber's not necessary, say fiber's bad. Fiber works for me. Not only does it keep me full, it keeps me pooping well, and it keeps a number of other things working well. I feel like it helps my glycemic response. I feel like it helps my gut diversity. And maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like it helps my brain. I cycle high fat and low fat at random times. This is a way that I keep things in check. I am a firm believer, and this is anecdotal because I can't find legit peer-reviewed research to back up every little teeny fragment of my life, but what's interesting, by cycling high fat and low fat, I find that I condition my body to getting used to using fats by giving it a higher fat diet with lots of macadamia nuts. I eat a lot of macadamia nuts. A lot of macadamia nuts, a lot of avocados, a lot of olive oil, a lot of real olives, a lot of avocado oil, whatever, you know, all of it. The bottom line is that then I will get my body used to that and then I'll occasionally drop the fats and increase the protein. And I'll try to keep my calories about the same, but I'll increase the protein and I'll drop the fats. For some reason, this seems to just lean me out really quick, even if my calories aren't that different. And I have always called it fat surging. And I kind of coined that term a few years ago because it's just what I've naturally done and a lot of people seem to have success with it. Why do I do it? I feel like it works. What's the mechanism? Probably has to do with fat oxidation to some degree, but it feels good. I don't eat a lot of nuts. I used to eat a lot of nuts and I find that it would be harder to stay under 8% body fat when I was eating a lot of nuts. Not because nuts are toxic, not because of the phytic acid, not because of oxalates, honestly, just because there's sort of this gray line, gray line, gray line until it's a black line with nuts. What was once a handful of nuts that was 80 calories has now over time become a handful of nuts that's 400 calories because I have grown this handful significantly. And that happens so easily. Start out, I'm gonna take a handful of these almonds here. Okay, oh, that was 70 calories, that was a waste, that wasn't fair. Uh, I'm gonna have a little more. But three weeks later, this handful is 400 calories. So nuts are just a small part of my life. Macadamia nuts are an exception because of a different kind of fat and because I feel like I can control it because they're usually a little expensive, but they're worth it. I prioritize recovery because I feel like if I am not moving well, I can't burn calories. I can't be active. 
I used to obliterate a body part in the gym. I used to go in and do like, if you're not rolling out of the gym in a wheelchair, you didn't do a good job on your legs. That was the way I used to feel. Okay, well then there goes my running for four days. So my non-exercise activity thermogenesis has gone way down because I've obliterated my body. So I prioritize recovery over intensity. Intensity is important, but intensity can't be there unless recovery is there. So I do a lot of sauna, I do a fair bit of ice bath, and I do a lot of active recovery, like walking, like cycling, like slow jogging, like hiking, and I'm all about prioritizing the recovery, mentally and physically. I eat a lot of eggs. I like eggs because I like the fats that are in them. I like the saturated fats in them. I like the monounsaturated fats in them. I like the protein in them. I like the choline in them. I like the benefits of eggs, and I eat a ton of them. And lastly, the thing that keeps me lean the most is I like hanging out with my wife. I'll see you tomorrow.